Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, create a rotating door. So in a previous tutorial on uh, opening doors with keys, I just showed how to open a door, you know, kind of in a generic way, just moving it up. But in this one, we're going to make it, you know, actually rotate like normal doors would. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll just create the key really quick. So we'll right click, create a blueprint of type actor, call this BP underscore key. I'll open that up really quick and we'll add a static mesh um, and I will make this mesh a material sphere okay uh, then we'll add one more component here uh, called sphere collision so we'll add that and we'll change its radius to 150 okay next thing we'll go to the event graph and we'll get rid of all this for right now and what we'll do is we'll take our sphere right click go to add event add on component begin overlap so what we'll do from here is we'll drag off of other actor and we want to cast to our third person character okay now we need to go to our third person character and we need to add a variable uh, for collecting keys so we'll go find our character and I'll say edit and in here we'll just add a variable um, called number of keys and I'll change this to an integer so we can compile and save that and go back to our key blueprint and off of this third person we want to get the number of keys okay and we basically would just want to take it and say plus so integer plus integer so we'll just add one and then we want to set the number of keys to the result of that okay so then finally after we've done that we will just destroy um, our key so we'll destroy actor Okay, so that's all we need to do there. We can close that. Next, let's create the door. So we'll right click, create a blueprint, type actor, I'll call this BP underscore uh, rotating door. Okay, we'll open this up. And I do have the starter content enabled, so I'll be able to access um, the door that they provide. So we'll add a static mesh. I'll just call this door. Door, there we go. And we'll go to static mesh and I'll just type door again and we'll use this sm underscore door from the uh, from the starter content now if you don't have this um, you could just use a cube you know and just shape it to look like a door or you could use your own door or whatever okay so we'll do that um, next what we want to do is um, right now the door doesn't have collision so we'll add that just so that we can't walk through the door so go to collision or we'll open up the uh, mesh here and we want to take our um, or we want to apply some basic collision so you go to collision say auto convex collision and then this window will pop up and just hit apply and then it'll do its thing and then once it's done you should see something like this so now we have collision so that's great okay we can close that now back in the door let's add another component we're gonna add this time a box collision okay and we'll position this um, so that we can uh, you know kind of be more centered with the door um, I'll make this about 45 by 40 oops not 458 45 um, and 100 I believe that's probably pretty good yep there we go that looks all right okay and then the last thing that we want to do is add um, an arrow component because that will help us tell which direction the door will open so we'll call this uh, open you know direction I guess okay and I'll just kind of position it up a little bit so it's easier to to see in the level okay so there's that um, next what we're gonna do is go to the event graph and we'll get rid of these two bottom ones but we'll keep the event begin play because we need that okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag off um, or actually before we drag off we want to get our actors rotation now the reason for this is because we need to create a variable that will help us kind of define the starting location uh, for or the starting rotation for our you know kind of animated door to start from because otherwise it will um, you know it won't it won't work very nice so we'll right click promote this to a variable and call it initial rotation okay and we'll hook this up to event begin play perfect compile and save there we go so next what we want to do is let's go to the let's click our box and we'll right click add an event on component begin overlap okay and we'll take our other actor again cast to our third person character ok 
Okay, then we want to get his number of keys. Okay, and we want to check if it is greater than or equal to um, a certain number of keys. So what we'll do for this is we'll right click on this value, promote it to a variable, and we'll call this uh, required number of keys. So this will be the you know, number of keys that you need to have to open the door basically. Okay, and we'll make that editable so that you can change it um, on a per instance basis. So next we'll drag off the condition here and say branch. Okay, and we'll hook this up. And basically if this is true, then we want to subtract the number of you know, keys. Um, at least in this system we will. So we'll take our number of keys, we'll say integer minus integer, we'll subtract our required number of keys like so, and then finally we'll drag out and say set number of keys. Okay, so we'll set the number of keys to equal to the result, and there we go. So next what we need to do is add one more variable called is door open, and this is going to be a boolean, so you can leave it as a boolean. Basically, we want to drag it out, say get, and we're going to do a branch from it. And um, if it is false, which it should be by default, we're going to say set is door open, oops, is door open to true. Okay, and if it's true, we're just going to leave it at nothing. And the reason for this is because um, when we open the door, we don't want to be able to continue to kind of overlap this volume. Uh, or this, you know, this collision volume, and then, you know, continually rotate it around in a circle. Because um, that can, you know, cause unwanted problems. So next we'll drag out and say add timeline. And we'll call this door rotation. Okay. And then we'll open it up. And I'm going to change its length to about uh, maybe 0.75-ish. That'll be all right. And then we'll add a float track. Okay. And I'll call this simply rotation. Okay. Then we'll shift click near the start here and change the time to zero and leave the value to zero. And then we'll shift click at the end and we'll change its time to the ending time. And then for the value, okay, so this is where, you know, you might want to customize it yourself, but basically for the value, this will be whatever rotation that you want to have. So we're going to choose um, a, like a rotation of maybe 90 degrees. Um, and then you can just hit these zoom buttons to kind of set, um, get it back in focus. But basically, that'll be you know whatever rotation that you want to have for the door. So you could say 120, or you know, or 45, or whatever. Um, yeah, that's that'll be the value that you need to change for whatever rotation you want. So next, we'll take both of these keys. Okay, select them both. We'll right click and say Auto to give it a nice kind of smoother curve. Okay, compile and save that, and then we'll go back to the event graph. Okay, and now we have this rotation value. So what we need to do uh, for the last part here is we need to take our initial rotation, okay, and we need to um, break its rotator so that we can get access to the individual values itself, and we only want to rotate on the yaw, okay. So we'll take this rotation here and say plus, so float plus float, and we'll add these values together, okay, and then we'll drag out and say make rotator. And I'm going to control uh, click to drag it back to the yaw. And then with that, we'll drag off of update, say set relative or set um, actor relative, uh, can't spell today, relative rotation. Okay, we want this relative rotation. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. You need to do the relative rotation, otherwise things will get messed up. So do the relative rotation, plug this in, and there you, there you go. Okay. Finally, what we'll do is um, we'll just add a, you know, kind of an ending overlap, um, you know, if you want the door to close again. So I'll just show you how to do that really quick. We'll take the box, right click, add, uh, add on component end overlap. Okay. And we'll just check again to make sure it's our third person character. Uh, because, you know, maybe you'll have like, I don't know, other objects that could be passing through the door. And you just want to make sure it only closes when your character's there or something. Okay. So we'll do that. Then, if it succeeds, we want to add a retriggerable delay, um, you know, of like maybe a second or so. So basically, that'll give us a second before the door closes, um, you know, after we leave the uh, the box collision, or maybe two seconds would be okay. Okay. Then after the delay, you want to set is door open um, to you know false again. 
and then say reverse. Okay, so something to keep in mind um, is just that uh, every time you overlap the volume, right, it will check to see your number of keys, okay? Um, and if it succeeds, right, it'll subtract. So what you might want to do actually is take this chunk and put it back here, okay, just to check if the door has already been opened or not, because um, then that will prevent it from, uh, you know, subtracting keys every time. So, uh, but this is just a, you know, a simple setup, um, but we'll go ahead and look at how it works now. We will take our door, drag it out, and as you can see, this will be the direction that it opens, okay. We'll take our key, you know, add a key, um, and now hit play, and if we go overlap, right, well, that's a problem. <laughs> One sec. And I think, actually, the problem is that um, if we go into our door, we actually didn't give the, re yeah, we didn't give the required number of keys a value. So we'll set this to like a default of one. Okay. So if you hit play, right, you can overlap the key, and then it'll open. And then if you leave, it'll close after two seconds, and then it won't open again because we don't have enough keys. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Again, you don't have to make it close. You don't have to make it, you know, subtract keys every time. Uh, but basically, if you want to make a door rotate, um, it's this little part right in here, right? This little chunk here. You just take a rotation, add a value onto the yaw, and then set its relative rotation, and that will make it rotate. Okay, well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helps. Um, and if you like the video, like or subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.